about the in the granny talks about the disruptive technologies in the rest of the world and that now we can learn more about the, the things that are happening in the North Macedonia. temu intelektualne svojine. Naravno, želim svim učesnicima puno zabave i puno kreativnosti toko ovog vikenda i svima vama uspešnu šestu za redom krenim konferenciju. Hvala puno za dovoljstvo je naše. So, now you can start with your presentation and please let us know more about uh, the importance of intellectual property, property for the startups and the companies. Will do, will do. Thank you. So I'm just going to uh, share my presentation. I hope you can all see it. Yes, yes. OK, so a little bit intro about uh, myself. Uh, like you already mentioned, I'm Gorga Feloski, and I'm operational director of the CU Tech Park, which is the technology park based on uh, CU University here in Tetova, North Macedonia. Uh, I have uh, ongoing more than 50 years of uh, career in managing startup centers, incubators, accelerators, and of course, tech parks. And I've built up a portfolio of uh, quite a uh, uh, experienced mentor, and I'm very passionate about brands and, and, and outdoor sports. So um, my background includes uh, operational managers, startup investment, intellectual property and valuations. And now, of course, we're going to talk about uh, uh, how IP can can disrupt industries. So basically, what we're going to talk now today is uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about trademarks, patents, industry design, uh, copyrights, and geographical marks. But of course, a little bit uh, on trade secrets, on how to transfer a technology, um, uh, how to do a e-trade, and how to protect actually this kind of intellectual property. Um, how do you uh, manage the international protection and how do you evaluate at the end of the day uh, this kind of IP assets and what uh, benefits did it bring to the company and to the financing uh, of, of a startup? So, so uh, I'll start with the basic two questions that everybody asks me. Uh, this is why and how. So why do I need to protect my, my IPs? It's, uh, the answer is very simple because it's bring added value to your business and to your product or service. And it brings you uh, uniqueness and, and protection uh, worldwide. Uh, how, how can we protect this, uh, these IP assets? It's uh, by taking small but timely steps towards protection. Uh, everybody thinks that it, IP protection is just a, a big expensive stuff that somehow magically a lawyer five or 10 years from now, we'll, we'll uh, jump in and, and solve our problems uh, right away. But it's not the case. It's up to, to the startups and it's up to, to the entrepreneurs to, uh, to take these small steps in, in a timely manner and to uh, build up a portfolio of good, good uh, IP assets. So we, we'll start just with the basics. Uh, what is actually the intellectual property? Intellectual property refers to the creations of human mind, such as inventions, literature, and artistic works, design and symbols, names and images used in, in everyday commerce. So basically, this is a wider definition of, of IP uh, with a special emphasis of creation of the human mind. So basically, IP addresses the creation of the human mind and creativity into business, into business processes. Uh, IP can be built in the fields of literature, arts and science, artistic interpretations, uh, radio broadcasts, inventions in, in almost all areas of uh, human activity and a specific discoveries. And it uh, tangles industrial blueprints, industrial models, fabrics, trades and or service marks, uh, and it dwells uh, as trade names. 
So the intellectual property system basically is divided into, into uh, wider categories. Uh, the, the first one is industrial property uh, or everything that has a direct benefit with the industry or with the business sector. And another, is, uh, another one is the copyright uh, laws, which addresses more individual rights. Uh, although these, these two uh, in, in the real world can be uh, in their line together. So for example, if we, if we took a, a simple mobile phone, uh, like we all now have, um, the patent, uh, the operational system, sorry, and the interface can be can be protected by patent. The software, pictures, ringtone, or the startup sound of a mobile phone can be protected by copyright. Uh, the shape of the phone, icons, design buttons can be protected by the industrial design. And of course, uh, the label distinguishing you from other competitors will be uh, the trademark and uh, some undisclosed parts of the software will be protected by, by, by trade secret. Another example is, is uh, shortly the, the CD player where the invention is um, of course patented, the brand is uh, protected by trademark, the design of, again is protected by the industrial design and the music itself is, is uh, protected by copyright laws. So basically we can see this uh, IP protection on on uh, same products, but different kind of protection in, in our everyday life. Uh, when we talk about trademarks, uh, actually uh, we talk about uh, a little bit of, of branding. So a trademark is exclusive industrial property right, which distinguishes the products and services of, uh, of one uh, competitor or one business from the rest of the competitors. Uh, the functions of the trademark uh, are, are, are well known. We all know them. We, we, they have a guarantee function. They have a control function. Of course, uh, advertising and promotion function, uh, but it also has a, a product origin function. So, so we kind of know what, what to expect from different products and services. Uh, and of course, it's, it's distinctive from, from other competitors on, on the market and it has a, uh, really strong competition function as well. Uh, so the general protection conditions of a trademark will be, it has to be a sign, uh, it has to have a graphic appearance, it's, it has to uh, be able to, to uh, express it graphically, and it has to be self-distinctive. Uh, so basically, uh, these three signs are generally uh, a precondition for, for a registration of a trademark. Uh, so what can be protected? Actually, words, letters, numbers, photos, drawings, combination of colors, maybe one, two or more colors. Uh, in some cases, uh, 3D shapes or a combination of all above mentioned can be uh, used in protect in protection of the of the trademark. So uh, in, in some countries and in some territories, it can be in any language, in any font. In some countries, it can be only on on, on specific language and specific, uh, let's say, font like Kirillic font, but it's uh, it's usually in in any language and in any font. So the most famous trademarks for for 2019, for for example, we we can all uh, more or less know about them. They divided in, into sectors and they they invest a lot in protecting their their IP, protecting their brands, and protecting them their uh, the trademarks as well. So uh, the trademark cannot be registered if it's uh, a generic item, basically describing a product or service. Uh, it cannot uh, describe uh, any anything that that you actually sell, or, or can describe the the product itself. Uh, it cannot be registered if it's mis misleading. So uh, if you say something is uh, is of certain quality, but it uh, isn't, it's it's misleading trademark. It can be anti-moral, religious, or contrary to the law and order of 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 uh, everyday everyday uh, life and perceptions. It cannot be country flags, coat of arms, official symbols of government and international or national organizations. And of course, it cannot be um, in conflict with uh, another existing trademark. So it cannot be uh, similar or replica to, to existing program trademark. 
Uh, of course, in, in the trademark types, you have the service collective or the certification mark. Certification mark is more or less the same as, as trademark, but it's uh, more, uh, 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 let's say, vector as toward, toward services. Um, service mark is uh, a collective mark. So it's, uh, let's say, if you, if you already have some standards on, on uh, some levels of network and then you allow to, to, to use the common, the common uh, servers uh, mark, while certification mark certifies that uh, uh, some products or services are of certain quality, like, uh, like the CE uh, e, uh, mark or war mark, which uh, protects all products that are more or less 100% wool. So uh, this is some examples of, of well-known trademarks. So you can see that either each of them says it's, it's Bravo, but it's in different, different category. So for example, you can have Bravo coffee or Bravo juice uh, or Bravo glasses. So uh, the trademark protection is for a specific kind of products and services for a specific category. And it's very, very, uh, hard to register the trademark in, in, in all categories. Uh, so this is two examples of actually a trademark registration. The first one is Copperton. It's, it's a, it's a German, uh, it's a German brand that uh, promotes, uh, sun cream and it had disputes while registering uh, a long time ago, uh, because it's descriptive. It's, uh, uh, it says that you have a copper tone if you if you apply this sun cream, but again, when when adding some colors and some graphic designs, eventually it was a real case scenario and it was, uh, let's say, re eventually registered. While the the right the hummingbird soda is uh, it's uh, it cannot be registered because it's misleading the the average consumer into drinking something that it, it is uh, not not existing. So when we talk about patents, uh, what actually is a patent? It's an exclusive subject right that protects the titular in all forms of economic exploitation of uh, his or her invention. So basically, a patent gives you a certain monopoly over time that you have exclusivity to to commercial uh, to commercialize and and exploit these these kinds of inventions. Uh, for a patent to be patentable, of course, it has to be intellectual good. It has to have a technical solution of a technical problem from all areas of technology. So basically everything that can be applied into, into industry and into everyday business life cannot be uh, uh, patentable, of course, if, if, if it's a technical solution to a technical problem. And the titulars are, uh, of course, natural persons and investors alongside with their legal um, Ancestor. So, so titulars are uh, someone who, who who have patented this um, and or break this invention uh, to to the market. So, uh, if you talk about is the new product patentable, what are the general conditions? So, the general condition is the, it, it's fall under the patent law subjects on on each country. So, it is an invention. It is a new or novelty product, uh, and it has innovative development advantage. And of course, it has to be appropriate for industrial use. So, so basically, this is a key factor for patenting. If it has to be appropriate for industrial usage, you have to to put it in the industry to be to be functional. So, why what, why would anybody patent uh, uh, something? Because it, it brings a strong market position, a high return of investments, uh, the possibility of selling or licensing the invention. We all know that IP assets are highly transferable. So you, you get to have uh, also increased negotiation power with talking with, with, uh, with foreign investors or partners or, or uh, uh, unlocking a certain uh, new markets. And of course, it brings positive image to your, to your business or to your company. So basically, what we get nowadays is NASA has our, our, around 6,500 patents in their uh, everyday activities on, on the uh, flying to space and on the on, uh, lunar and 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 other uh, missions, but let's say that the newest the newest car cars in the automotive industry has uh, near ten thousand new patents. 
So basically what, what they do is uh, protect every, every kind of innovation because they have this exclusive right to, to commercialize it, but also they use it as a strategy to, to ban competitors entering this kind of uh, market or to give them head start in front of other uh, competitors on the, on the market they're, they're working. Um, so now in the, in the time of pandemic, uh, uh, it is quite the question of, of, of um, uh, can a method for medical treatment be patentable? So basically uh, a method for medical treatment, yes, it can be patentable. Uh, uh, just it has to have some human intervention. So you cannot patent uh, something that is already in the nature without adding a human touch or a human intervention. So if you, if you have a new method of medical treatment or a new way of medical treatment, yes, it can be patentable um, alongside that uh, it's already been done some laboratory work and already you have to, to put your human in, uh, input in. Uh, when we're talking about industrial design, uh, we are talking about the right of industrial ownership, which protects a new form of an object, a painting, a scratching, a uh, drawing, a contour, uh, or, or a composition of colors uh, and, their, and their combination. So um, when we're talking about the design and, or the industrial design, we talk about the two types of, of design. Uh, these are the T, uh, 2D industrial design, uh, which is known in, in our languages as Mostra or a new form, form of painting. And of course, the 3D industrial design, which is a new model, a new form or an object that, that can be protected. So on the picture, you have the, the, the two samples. One is the 2D industrial design, which is actually printed on, 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 a, on a cup and the 3D industrial design, which is actually the whole Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, so the biggest uh, thing that has to be mentioned here is that the industrial design reflect, reflects only the aesthetics aspects or the outside appearance of the of the product. They, they, they cannot go into the product itself. How does it function? Uh, does it function well? They only protect the outside or, or the aesthetic of the product. So the industrial design eventually will be protected only if it's a new original, um, let's say, uh, idea or, or, or graphic design and as well as record that has a uh, recognized individual character. So on the examples here, you can see that uh, although uh, these are quite ordinary objects like, like, um, like a bicycle or a, or a lamp or a scissors, uh, their, their design is, is new and, and original, so they, they can be protected as uh, uh, industrial design objects. Uh, another question is, can you protect a traditional folklore? This is also some something that is uh, new and 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 uh, uh, appraising because um, traditional folklore is, is is part of of our tradition, uh, but uh, in the ways of uh, digitalizing it in the ways of uh, digitalization and disruption, uh, yes, it can be protected if it's uh, if it's altered graphically uh, or 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 let's say pixelized digitally. So basically, you cannot have a, a copy paste on, on the on the traditional folklore itself and and protect it uh, like a design, but you have to alter it somehow. Uh, and if you if you have uh, enough creativity in it, it it can it can be pro, uh, protected under the, the industrial design. Uh, when we talk about tra trade secrets, it's basically. Uh, in general, any kind of confidential information that that can be protected. So the the, the vast majority of information can can uh, underline in processes, techniques, and 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 shared know-how, uh, compilation of, of data, of course, databases, algorithm, computer process, uh, formulas, secret formulas, some kind of financial information, manuals, and ingredients. And of course, R and D. So basically, any kind of information that brings uh, brings a value to to your company can be protected under the trade secret. So uh, some standards for trade secrets say that okay, in order to to have a trade secret, you have uh, to have the information uh, must be secret, of course, 
uh, and not share, shared with uh, anyone in the company or, or outside of it. So the information might have commercial value. That's that's why it's it's a secret. And the titular of the information must have undertaken some minimum steps required to, uh, so this information can remain secret in the in the future. So basically, trade six are, secrets are some sort of um, alternative for for patent, where in patents you can you must disclose your your patent to, to the general public. You you must file, let's say, a patent application. Or trade secrets, you don't have to officially disclose any information as well as uh, a few people uh, know about it and, and you, 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 have, you have undertaken minimum steps required to, 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 to have this as a secret. The most famous, let's say, trade secrets are the Coca-Cola secret formula, recipe formula, the, the Windows uh, uh, source code, and of course, some um, KFC also has its protection on, on the secret recipe. So we, we, we can have this uh, the, uh, protection in, in our everyday lives and in even in small companies in here uh, in our region that, that can use this uh, IP asset. When we talk about uh, geographical labels or geographical labeling, so we talk about Champagne, we all know what, where Champagne, uh, what, what Champagne is. So it's, it's actually um, a, bu a bubble wine, but it's originated from, from the area of Champagne in France. And that's why it's called a champagne. Uh, of course, you, you already know more than me. Slivovice is something that, that is very familiar with, with, with Serbia. Um, Havana, uh, of course, uh, cigarettes are, are, are well known also. Uh, Pirotsky Chilin, uh, also something originally from Serbia. Tequila, we all know about tequila. And let's say another example from, from your country is uh, Ozička Presuta. So basically, geographical labors are, are divided into two, two categories. The first is geographical indication or where they are made. And of course, the designation of origin, uh, the second one, which is what, what is their origin. So for example, something can be created on a specific territory in a specific area. And there, uh, there is uh, this geographical indication. Uh, while uh, uh, designation of origin is you can have different different set of of products or services, but they are all assembled at, at one point or in one location, and this is of course the designation of origin. Uh, so, so for example, wines of, of Macedonia it, it comes from uh, the territory in the regions of Macedonia, uh, here in North, North Macedonia in, in Greece and, and some areas of Bulgaria. Uh, but of course, Leskovačka Evar comes from from the territory of of, of Leskovac, and that that's uh, that's uh, unique about uh, uh, this geographical um, uh, indication. Uh, now we're going to talk more about copyright, which is more more uh, individual rights, but it can also uh, bring benefits to the to the business sector or, or the startups. So uh, a copyrights are the rights of intellectual creations in the fields of literature, art, and science. And uh, it is individual and intellectual creation from the fields uh, of literature, science, or arts, or any other areas of creativity. And it's regardless the, uh, the items or the processes themselves or the form of its expression. So basically, it's it's any any kind of inter, individual and intellectual creation that can that can be applied. So its characteristics characteristics are it has to be original individual rights or let's say uh, uh, when I say individual I mean not just one person but uh, let's say it can be two three five person but it has to have uh, individuality uh, uh, on the right itself and. It, uh, characters with, with the promotion of, of the emotional values of the older authors or, or old author uh, himself or herself. So it's uh, the general characteristic that is more distinctive is the protection from the moment of, of, of its creation. So a copyright can be protected uh, right after you, you, ju you just finish uh, writing your poem or uh, uh, writing a business plan or, or uh, or uh, constructing a, a, a pitch deck. So basically you have, you, you don't have to protect it formally uh, anywhere. You don't have to protect uh, 
we have, we have uh, let's say, some sort of uh, documentation uh, on national or international level, but it's protected from the moment of, of, of its creation. And for the IT businesses, it's, it's good news because the code is, is generally uh, IP protection. So the moment you finish your codes, it it's, uh, already has protection, uh, some kind of protection from, from the moment you finish it. Uh, the copy creation is uh, 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 processing in the culture of heritage, uh, 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 the copyright creations. So basically, uh, a collection of, of copyrights also can be protected as, as a copyright uh, under the copyright law. For example, encyclopedia, anthology, some sort of database or a set of, set of documents uh, uh, assembled together can be protected as a copyright itself because it's the cho uh, choice of the agreement of the individual copyrights or the author uh, himself or herself. So, for example, if you take certain poems from a certain author and then reorganize it like like you uh, like you're willing, and that uh, is also uh, can be protected by copyright. And of course, uh, some databases with simple data is just entered it's uh, it's also can be protected as as, as copyright uh, so in, in some areas the the integral copyright parts can be protected by itself like like uh, the, the title for a song or a blueprint for a, for architect architectural design it, if it represents a copyright by by itself this is especially done to done to music uh, so what cannot be protected uh, uh, on the on on the way of uh, copyright um, cannot be idea, concept, or official text from from a government, a public or a judicial body, and its translations uh, when it's published as as a public text. So you cannot copyright an idea or a concept. It has to have a material uh, surface. So basically. Uh, nobody can guarantee you that the, the idea, if you have uh, yourself, you didn't, you didn't, let's say, stole it from anywhere or, or use it from, from anywhere. Nowadays, uh, on, on, the, on the web or, or, or on the internet, you can find a lot of business ideas and concepts that are just thoughts. And if you don't put it on a paper, on a CD, or on a computer, it, it cannot, be, cannot be protected. Uh, so the author gets the recognition for her exclusive commercial life, right? So uh, this this actually means that you have two two uh, rights as an author. One is uh, material rights, so you can uh, you can publish, uh, non-publish uh, the, the the material itself. You can uh, choose where or or when to to publish. And you have uh, the personal rights uh, as well. So, in in regard of the on the, on the online content, um, so uh, we we talk about the internet and, and sharing uh, sharing uh, content all the time. So basically, is the internet a public domain? Is everything that you share uh, a, a copyright or can can be protected by by via copyright? So, so this is actually a hot topic in the IP, IP in industry right now. So it's uh, some of them say it's, it can be protected. Some of them say it, it, it can't. But of course, the internet um, has, has drastically changed the, the, the ways that we communicate. So the, the basics of the IP is the, is the territorial integrity. So basically, you have a country or a territory that allows or, or don't allow certain copyright to be protected in, in their country. But when you go to the internet, it's, it's a different ballgame. So basically everything that you do, every link that you copy and, 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 and send it to a private chat or private group, you're, you're doing some copyright infringements. But uh, the internet in, uh, has, uh, has already changed so, so, so much uh, lately. So it's ba basically hard to, to track or to follow uh, any any sort of information regarding the, the, the copyright. Uh, when we talk about technology transfer, um, the most common uh, uh, example of, of transfer of technology are the um, licensing, the know-how, franchising agreements, 
uh, on-demand agreements and consultancy agreement services. We we all know uh, know this. Uh, uh, let's say by default, but uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's uh, ag agreements that can transfer the, the know-how or the technology to a different territory, to a different city or, or to another country. And uh, actually the, the good thing is the, that the giver of this uh, um, transfer of uh, IP can, can localize the territory, can localize the time frame, like say for example, for for a year or for two years periods and can limit, let's say, the exclusivity. So I, he, he or she can give exclusive rights to one partner, two partners, or, or maybe a multiple partners at the same time. Uh, when we talk about the, the e-commerce, um, nowadays there's a lot of companies dealing with e-commerce. Uh, um, so they have to be um, aware of the patent portfolios, their trademark, their domain names, uh, their software or their original data databases, and pay a special attention on on this kind of uh, on this kind of um, content because uh, uh, it it can be uh, IP infringement in some areas like hyperlinks, uh, web articles, text, personal information protection like uh, GDPR data protection, and contents of course from from external or other sources. Uh, when we talk about the employees versus consultants, so a lot of companies are giving uh, some outsourced work to, to, to uh, let's say, creativity companies or, or, or individuals like for, for a logo design, which actually in, in this case, it can be okay. The designer gives you four or five uh, logo propositions and then you pick one and then you pay him. Actually, the copyright for, for designing this, this, uh, this logos is to the author itself or to the individual that, that has created this kind of logos. But uh, with the agreements, he can transfer the exclusive light rights to use uh, this, this, kind of, um, uh, this kind of content to, to, to your company or to your business. So basically, it's, you have to, uh, to be aware that it's his creation and his design and he just transferred the the material rights of usage to, to your company. And that's why you have to be aware that uh, in, in, in works made from hire on or some employees that can be, can be, uh, can have some issues in the, in the IP uh, direction. So some golden rules to avoid this kind of conflicts with employees or contractors will be to ask for legal advice upfront, to conduct uh, written agreements, to insert some confidentiality clauses and uh, have internal policies and regulations and manuals ready before you uh, start or jump into another, another uh, uh, let's say, uh, consultants. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the business aspects of the of the IP. So in the future of work, um, in the pre-industrial era, let's say the the capital um, uh, uh, was uh, very very uh, let's say. Um, a small portion of the um, of the work of the process itself, while the workforce was was the most expensive and 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 time consuming, and the knowledge was uh, a little bit as as five percent. Well, in the industrial era, the capital uh, played a significant role. The workforce, of course, still still uh, had a a major impact, and the knowledge began to increase. And nowadays, in the modern society, and in the uh, based on the know-how economy, actually the knowledge plays a very significant uh, role. So the work workforce is 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 uh, uh, starting to shrink. The capital also has some some role in it. But the, in in our modern society, uh, the the knowledge, the transfer of that knowledge, and the know-how play play a major role in in creating uh, value and added value. Uh, so in the 1982, uh, uh, experts had calculated that tangible, tangible assets included uh, more than 60% of, of all the assets in, in a company. This is worldwide uh, data. So basically in 2002, uh, the intangible assets were um, uh, as much as 70% of all the business value created globally. And the prediction or the forecast for, for two years now is that we will 
uh, increased to 84% uh, of all the assets that every company globally possess will be intangible assets and intangible assets also include the IP assets as well. So today for, for every company, it's essential to, to, to choose the right business model, to choose the right growth strategy, which is only unique to them, to build a system that suits uh, uh, you most and to build uh, organization or culture that, that flourish this, uh, the, the creation and innovation of, of these ISV aspects. And of course, attract, attract the right people to organization. So um, uh, when we see the innovation process in, in, a, in, a, in a startup or in a, in a uh, startup at scale up timeframe, so the uh, IP protected or IP needed assets can be the business plan model, prototype, uh, we would work or the business concept in the, in the phase of idea or the concept phase. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the legal status, the management team, the, of course, the minimal income or the operational income, the networking and startup finances. As you grow and as you begin to, to look more like a startup uh, or scale up, the functionalities, the administration, marketing, sales, and the income group play a significant role. And when you're already expanding, we talk about international support, new initiatives, um, of course, access to new market and, and, and a dynamic need for, for IP and their protection. So in, in the innovative and disruptive cycle, you got the first movers, middle majority, and then last movers. Uh, so first movers are uh, innovators and, and visionaries. They, they try to um, they they um, try to be adventurous, excite uh, excitement seekers, and they try to be leaders and opportunists. Try, try to uh, test new stuff, see new stuff, and buy new stuff. Uh, while the pragmatists and conservative uh, usually um, take advantage of the planners. They, they jump in later on, on 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 any sales or consuming process. And of course, the skeptics on no rationalists. They 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 jump on uh, as last movers, and they're really uh, insignificant if you're dealing with uh, with fast growing or disruptive business. So uh, when we talk about IP. Uh, it's, it's highly attracted to investors uh, and you know, investors uh, just love IP. Uh, we, we'll talk about why, uh, because they love something new. It's a, if it's a world class asset, uh, they have commercialization opportunities and, and, and pure path to market. Uh, uh, so they have no downsides because it's unique. It's already some sort of protection and it, uh, it, they, they don't like actually percentage and stakes and, and, and equity on, on, on this side. But uh, uh, they, they love patents, designs, uh, trademarks and brands, especially uh, well-known brands and trade secrets that can be also uh, unique. And they want to have this freedom to, to operate uh, uh, internationally. So uh, IP can, can bring value to to every niche phase of, of your business of your business life cycle so in the in the form of invention you can use patents useful models and trade secrets in 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 copyright you can use uh, of course copyright uh, copyright laws when you talk about financing you you, you might include patents or uh, useful models uh, when we talk about commercialization and marketing, you can include industrial design, of course, trademark patents, geographical labels. And when you, we talk about exports of, of uh, services and products, we talk about protecting all of, of IP assets. So uh, IP assets, like every other assets, uh, bring added value to a company. And there are more than 50 different methods of valuation IP right now. And the most frequent and most used ones are, are actually 21 variations uh, from the same three uh, methods. The first method is reproduction or recreation. Okay, if some company have developed so, uh, a product or service, how much would it uh, cost me to recreate or reproduce this? Uh, the method of far market value, uh, which means, okay, how much can IP and bill sell or, 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 or buy it on a, on a free market? Uh, and the method of future info, okay, how much can, can we uh, earn from uh, using this IP in, in the future? 
So the, the key takeaways from, from, from my uh, lecture today would be uh, to learn how you can protect different different IP assets at a different uh, time phase of, of your business. Uh, IP might be your most valuable business asset. So basically, uh, you you try to 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 see what's most valuable in your business and try to be as unique as you as you can because uh, only uh, IP assets are are in increasing in value over over time. So basically, um, the more you use them in in everyday life and in everyday business, they increase in value. Everything else uh, depreciates over time. So uh, IPs are, are also highly transferable. You can sell them, license them, generate royalties from them, or give them for free if, if you choose so. Uh, and today, almost 80% of all startups value worldwide is generated through their IP. So basically extra income, extra visibility, and extra disruptiveness uh, all the way, all the way uh, to the top. Uh, investors love IP because it's unique uh, to them and it generates extra income. And if something happens to, to your company, to your business, they can easily transfer this kind of IP assets to another company and to another, another business unit. Uh, protecting IP is in the expenses, as, as all of us think, if you make the right small steps on time. So basically, it's, it's not something that can be overly expensive if you, if you think forward and you think ahead and if you make the, the right steps um, at the right time. Uh, my advice would be to, to don't wait for some lawyer 10 years from now to magically uh, solve all your IP issues instead of you. So you, you, you just have to recognize, to develop and you try to manage your IP assets all the time uh, and, and nobody can, can uh, bring more value to, to your company than, than you as an entrepreneur your, yourself. Um, and of course, the, the, the final takeaway will be to grasp your, your uniqueness and, and find a way to monetize it. Because at the end of the day, uh, IP gives, uh, gives you uh, certain additional income, certain additional, uh, let's say, uniqueness to your business or to your products. And of course, it can generate a lot of a lot of money along the way so this is uh this will be it for from from my uh uh lecture today feel free to contact me if, if anything is uh, needed or do you have any questions uh special thanks to snezhana thank you very much Coco, for this great presentation and for uh, helping us understand better the importance of the protecting intellectual property. So I hope that today we uh, use we use this opportunity to present to all the startup community this topic that it is much more clear for them what they can or not to do in the future. And maybe for the end, just to conclude, uh, for uh, when we are speaking about our Balkan region, so in your opinion, how? much they are using this so, uh, possibility to protect their intellectual property having in mind how long is this process and maybe how quickly their products are becoming obsolete so what are you thinking yes so in, in general we are lacking about let's say western europe or the united states in in, in IP protection but but not by a lot i would say in in, in our let's say wider communities we, it's, it's essential that uh, uh, especially young people are getting aware of what IP can, can bring to the businesses and the ways that uh, uh, it can be protected. Uh, like we saw in some cases, it, it, it doesn't include a general application or formal protection. So you can do a lot of IPs by yourself, like, like contracts, employees, uh, trade secrets uh, or copyright. So basically, yeah, yeah, uh, we have our legislation harmonized with the with the EU legislative more or less uh, everywhere uh, through this uh, Balkan region. And I think young entrepreneurs, especially the ones working with uh, outside market with 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 Europe and uh, Asia and and the, the states in particular, they are aware of the added value that IP can bring to the business and they're starting to, to work towards uh, protecting and 
and managing their, their IP assets. So yeah, I, I think the wheel is uh, moving into that direction and I'm satisfied with the, with the pace it, it's going. Great, this is really good information. Thank you very much once again. It was really great having you in this cranny edition and we are looking forward to some new joint activities with you and to see you in person in each uh, and work more together. So thank you very much for your time and all this really useful information. And we are now inviting you all to follow the next programs of the Cranny conference and all the information you can find on our website, thecranny.org. So see you soon on some new programs. Thank you again and have a great conference. Thank you very much.